Hey guys, welcome back to the workbench. So, I'm just going to make a real quick video to explain how to assemble the Comet 180 and 210. I've got both of them here, actually. So, real quick, um, I've shown this frame before, at least the prototype version, which you can see here. This is the 170 prototype that I built up. The 180 and 210 differ slightly. Um, the main difference is are in the bottom plate. I've cut out some material that I just felt like wasn't needed. This frame's a little bit on the heavier side. It's not as much of a racer as it is a basher. So this is a four millimeter unibody plate. Now, um, there's also the 210, which is very similar. It's just bigger. Now the overall weights of these when assembled, this frame dry weight is 115 and the 210 is 124. So the 210 is actually a lot lighter comparatively than the 180. So hey, that was a bit of a mistake on my part. What I was trying to say was there's not that much of a weight penalty to go with the 210 versus the 180. So back to the clip again. So anyways, I'm going to show you how to assemble those real quick. And uh, we'll start with the 180. Now with the kit, you're going to get your base plate. You're going to get two of these camera adjustment plates you can call them I guess. You'll have two roll bars which makes up the main structure of the pod. You'll have a VTX mounting plate, uh, two VTX side plates so these mount that VTX plate on the roll bar and then you're gonna have this little um, nut plate we'll call it. Uh, you'll also get orange standoffs which I'll just point to. Now these are the ones I'm using for my prototypes but the ones that will come in the Armor Tan production kits will be orange they just won't be stepped down, they'll be the same diameter the whole way. You also get a number of M10, M3 by 10 millimeter screws and some I believe these are M3 by 11 or 12 millimeter screws. So real quick let's just start with the roll cage so I'm gonna get rid of this base plate because we're not gonna start with that. So to start assembly First thing you want to do is go ahead and start prepping the parts that you're going to need to build the roll cage. Now, this nut plate, you're going to get these little um, sunken nuts or pen nuts or whatever you want to call them. Basically, they have a like a knurling on them, and they press into the holes here. So you're going to have two of these to build and four of these nuts. And you're going to just take them, and you're going to stick them in the hole, and then with a set of pliers or you can take a small mallet and tap them on a flat surface you can press these in so these shouldn't be too tight there's just going to be enough friction in there so that when this thing is fully seated it can't spin so now you can see kind of press that in there and we're going to repeat that put both nuts on the same side um, there's one for the front and the back of the frame. So anyways, I've actually got two built up. I'm going to show you those. So you can see, here's one that's built up and another one. And they're pretty much symmetrical, so it doesn't matter. As long as you put both nuts on the same side when you install them, you're good. Alright, so now that we've done that, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and grab the rubber dimes or grommets that hold the camera. And we're going to take the camera plates and we're going to shove these suckers in there that big 10 millimeter hole. So you can see it kind of takes a little bit of work. Use WD-40 if you like. And you're basically putting it in there. Now you want to make sure you mirror this because you have to have a left and a right side. So when you do the other side, make sure that it's facing the other way. So again, I have those completed already. I've got a set of them. You can see they're mirrored. So you got a left and a right. You also notice there's a little washer in there for the M2 screw. The kit will include those. They're very small. Basically, that's going to keep the screw from pulling through the rubber into the camera. So, now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and take one side of the roll bar and we're going to mount it with the rubber grommet facing inside like that. So we're going to grab some of these M10 screws. We're going to put them through both sides. Right? We're going to grab a standoff and we're going to thread that on there. Now, I find it that you don't have to put all these standoffs in on the first pass. You can decide which ones you want to use to hold the structure together. This particular one, 
I found that I took it out when I did the final assembly because it allowed me to get my fingers in there to plug in the cam because the camera sits in here as you can see where the plug is uh, when you take that standoff out it gives you more room to get your finger in there and push the connector in the back so you might not want to put this particular one in first but anyways I'm going to show you how the rest of it goes so you're going to repeat that process for the rest of the standoffs on this side we're basically going to build up half half of it and then start stacking the plates in it so <clears throat> So here we go, we've got three standoffs in the front with three 10 millimeter screws going through. So you can see kind of what's going on there, right? Right. So at this stage, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and take your FPV cam and uh, go ahead and install it in here. So we'll just stick it in there. We've already got the little washer in. We're gonna take a screw which comes with the kit, an M2 screw. I believe it's five millimeters long. Just gonna tighten that down in there. Now you don't need this to be too tight, you know, because um, the the cavity for this screw actually goes through to where the board is. So if you try to tighten it down too much, you could hit that board, which shouldn't be a problem. The way the the screw is sized and spaced in this, you should feel feel it stop before you get there. But if you were to use a longer screw, and I've done this before, you can go through further and actually damage the board. So anyways. We've got that in there, got our cam mounted, you can see it's in the in the grommet right now. So we'll go ahead and continue to the back end. Now we want to grab one of these side plates and we're going to put it on here like so. Right. Go ahead and put a screw through, put a standoff on that to start the sucker off. All right. we'll repeat that two more times. So we'll have a total of three standoffs in the back, three standoffs in the front. All right. So now we've got all six standoffs in. We've got the side profile of the pod ready to go. Now, before we want to button this up, we want to go ahead and take the VTX mounting plate, which is this bad boy right here and we're going to take the VTX and attach it. Now this kit is designed for specifically for pigtail style VTX's. So here's a good example Hawkeye 200 milliwatt. You got this SMA pigtail with a 90 degree connector. So you want to get one like this or you want to solder extension onto your existing VTX. Now this plate is wide enough to take um, even larger VTX than that. Not too much larger, but larger. You can go a couple millimeters. So anyways, we're going to take this SMA and we're going to go ahead and unthread these adapters. And we're going to put this like so. All right? We'll go ahead and put the uh, put the washer. You can put all, whatever combination of washers and whatever you use on here. I don't always reuse the uh, the split washer that's supposed to act like a lock nut. I usually just use the serrated one that's on there. And then once you've got that on there, go ahead, get yourself a wrench, just tighten it down. Now, what you wanna do with this piece is you're gonna go ahead and kind of zip tie it right here. So, I'm not gonna do that, but basically you run the zip tie around, you can see Right here on the two sides, there's a little recess that's going to allow the zip tie to pass between the part and the plate. So anyways, once you have the zip tied on here, it'll look like this. Um, you know, you'll have access to your VTX switches, and this is going to be ready to mount in the, in the frame. So anyways, um, I'm going to go show you now how you put this in there. It's really simple, obviously. You basically are just going to slot it in. So give me one second to get this off of here just because I'm just building for demonstration purposes. So now you're gonna go ahead and slot this on here. It's gonna have your VTX on it already. You can see it sits in that two little holes in there, right? Okay, so I'll just put this in the center here. Now it's easiest to do this on a flat surface. You wanna go ahead and take your two nut plates, right? And you'll see that they have a V shape on one side you want this shape to be facing out of the pod on both the front and the rear. Now they're symmetrical, so it doesn't matter if you put the one in the front and the back, they're the same. 
but you want to have that V shape point outward on both sides. And if you look, you'll see a little slot at the bottom of the front, right about there. And another one, well that's the back, I'm sorry. I said that was the front, but it's the back. Here's the front, right up here. So now you've got your two nut plates inside. You want to go ahead and take your second roll bar and situate that over the nut plates and line it up with the standoffs. Now, um, what I find easiest is to go ahead and do the VTX mount in the back first once you've got this all lined up. So go ahead and take the other VTX side plate, stick it on here. You might have to move stuff around. And again, 10 millimeter bolts. You're just gonna put those right through there. You're gonna tighten them up. this pretty snug at this point if you were building it but I'm not gonna snug it too much because I'm gonna take it apart because I'm just showing the the assembly process more or less all right so you got those three on there now this is pretty well held together it's not gonna fall apart too easily um, so we'll go ahead and take the last part which is this cam plate and uh, we're gonna put it on this side so we'll go ahead and kind of jimmy this on there which the rubber can kind of get in the way sometimes until you got both sides positioned perfectly, which usually you don't until you put the whole thing completely together and move it around a little bit. I'm using the wrong driver, no wonder. I'm like, why is that night tightening? No wonder, I'm using the wrong size. Anyways, all right. Oh, the sticker's in the way. Yeah, small snafu. Anyways little QC sticker on the back of the camera it's actually in the way of the mount which I usually tear those things off anyways but I'll do that later so anyways three more bolts you've essentially assembled your pod section now you may have noticed if you're familiar with these designs that use this dime they, they call it that uh, I didn't put in the secondary locking um, nut which is basically a sunken nut that you stick in there and you can put another screw in, an M3 screw, and you could lock down the angle of the camera. Now, the tolerance stack up on this, the way it all goes together, the roll bar and everything, um, I found that it's actually pretty snug. So the camera itself doesn't really, doesn't really move angle. You can adjust it and it kind of stays there. So it's got some tension in it and that's just because of the way the plates sandwich everything. They kind of push the rubber against the camera gives it a little bit of tension so it's not loose by any means so I'm really not going to worry about it I don't think we need those but if you decide you want them they're there you just put the sunk nut in the back side and you put an M3 screw through here and lock it in place so now you've got your pod you've done all the hard work to assemble the frame portion and you're going to go ahead and build up your main plate like you would any other quad you got your holes for your flight controller and your PDB you got your motor mounts, you got enough space here for 20 or 30 amp ESCs, and just wire it like normal pretty much. And then the pod slips down on top. And you'll notice there is six holes, and there are six tabs. So one, or one, two, three, four, five, six. And those are gonna go in there. You're gonna take this and flip it over once you got everything assembled and connected. You'll see two holes in the back, two holes in the front, and you're gonna have these M3 by 11 millimeter, I wanna say they are. They could be 12, I don't know, it depends on what hardware is available at the time. 11 millimeter is what you really need, 12 is a little bit longer than what you need. You're gonna put these through here, and these four holes to hold the pod onto the frame. Now, you're not gonna tighten these too much, you're just gonna snug them up, and I would suggest using blue Loctite. Um, there's not gonna be, a bottoming out point um, if you keep tightening these what's happen what will happen is you will bend the carbon nut plate and uh, it's not really designed for that the carbon nut plates just meant to provide a little bit of tension in the downward position um, these six tabs are really meant to transfer the force of impact into the main plate so 
you're just trying to put a little bit of tension on these and like I said go ahead and use some Loctite so that they don't back out and I'll show you in a second why so let me just get these a little bit snugger again don't tighten them too much all right so if you look in there you can see there's a gap Let's see if I can get my hand out of the way you can kind of see the screws um, the reason why that's done is because you need a little bit of space for that tab to hold in. So there's a little gap there, like I said. Just don't tighten it down all the way. Don't try to break this because you'll just bow that nut plate and break it out. And you don't want to do that. So you just want to make it snug. Use some Loctite and that's good enough. And this is actually pretty, pretty solid. So, I mean, most of your impacts are going to be compressive. And because they're going to be compressive, you're going to transfer that force right into these tabs and into the frame. So there you go. There is the Comet 180 basic assembly of the frame overview. Um, it's exactly the same for the 210. The only difference being the plate for the bottom is bigger. So thanks for tuning in. Bye.